Okay. Today we are going to discuss insulin signaling and mitochondria in new cellular target. We all know that the receptor signaling is the key in glucose gate opening. And there is a new class of molecules called glimmins, which are likely to be launched soon, which fundamentally work through insulin signaling and mitochondria. We all know that people living in India have a very rapid early macro and microvascular complications and they have an early progression of the disease. And therefore, there is a call for early action. We have early onset of type 2 diabetes. They are uh, coming around two decades earlier and they present often with complications. The biggest clinical challenge in management of diabetes is the impact, how the current treatment approach impacts the macrovascular disease, not the microvascular disease. And therefore, in long-term follow-up, which we have of 30 years of UKPDS, we clearly recognize that. We know that diabetes-related complications appear early. They accumulate rapidly within microvascular group in more than two-thirds, despite of background metformin therapy. And that is a very well-documented thing. So why is the mitochondria becoming the focus or the heart of type 2 diabetes mellitus? We know that if you look at the beta cell dysfunction, if you look at the hepatic or the muscular glucose reuptake or the hepatic neoglucogenesis, the typical triad, what is at the focus or the heart of the matter is mitochondrial dysfunction and mitophagy. So clearly we know that type 2 diabetes is a chronic metabolic disorder with metabolic dysfunctions. There are genomic issues in mitochondrial DNA. There are DNA mutations. There are polygenic variants. We have environmental factors like intrauterine malnutrition, environmental pollutants, and obesogenic environment and obesity. All of them stun the mitochondria and cause mitochondrial dysfunction, which in turn will result in beta cell dysfunction, where there is abnormal fusion, fission, autophagy of the beta cells, apart from impaired insulin secretion. But more importantly, mitochondria halts and makes the insulin signaling inappropriate and that is the core defect of insulin resistance where there is a down regulation of mitochondrial DNA, down regulation of oxidative phosphorylations and up regulation of the bad uh, products, end products like DAGs, the ceramides, the LCACs and ultimately the end result is type 2 diabetes mellitus. So in the metabolic dysfunction triad of beta cell dysfunction hepatic leap, lipo and gluconeogenesis and insulin resistance, clearly we see that mitochondria is at the heart of the matter. Because we know that mitochondria catalyzes an energy gradient across the respiratory transport chain, complex 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, which mediate insulin secretion and mediate insulin sensitivity. So if you see the complex 5 here illustrated in this diagram, you can see the beta cell secretion and insulin secretion and smooth muscle insulin sensitivity. Fundamentally, there is inflexibility. So what is mitochondrial inflexibility? It is a dysregulated energy substrate metabolism of the mitochondria. Healthy mitochondria allows efficient functioning of the liver and the skeletal muscle, the pancreas and the cardiac tissues. And there is an alternative switching between glucose substrates or pyruvate. This alternative metabolic fuels is lost when we accumulate a lot of ectopic fat and become obese or we eat too much of carbohydrates and eventually when there is diabetes, obesity or type 2 diabetes, this ability of mitochondria to switch the metabolic fuels is lost. That is the crux of the matter. That is the heart of the matter. And that is called as mitochondrial induced metabolic inflexibility. So obviously when you have a fast state or a fed state, there is a ability of the substrate like free fatty acid or glucose to switch oxidation and acetyl CoA. And that acetyl CoA creates an energy gradient with NADH, which is responsible for cellular energetics, which mediate insulin sensitivity and insulin secretion with an increased ATP ADP ratio. But what happens in type 2 diabetes or adiposepathy or uh, adiposity based chronic uh, uh, metabolism and DBCD? is the glucose substrates are downregulated. There is excess glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. There is a diarrhea of free fatty acids. And all that allows the fuel substrates to go in excess to cause an oxidative environment of stress that will upregulate acetyl-CoA and reactive oxygen species, which will lead to acetylation. And the signaling at cellular energetic level is impaired 
because of down regulation of atp to adp ratio and both insulin secretion and insulin sensitivity is impaired so therefore now why are we talking about this we are talking about this because we have a molecule which is similar to metformin you can see the metformin structure here which has a dimethyl group the phenformin structure which has a phenyl group and now we have a trizene compound trizene compound which has a bigunite substructure similarity with metformin a trizene compound with bigunite substructures with similarity of metformin is imiglimin and this imiglimin possesses two carbon atoms with cyclopentane ring this imiglimin possesses two carbon atoms with cyclopentane rings and structural similarities and differences suggest that there are complementary effects of mitochondrial respiratory ch chain as well as c1 and c3 with improved cellular energetics so clearly we recognize that so remember imiglimin is a first in class molecule it has been terminologically named by who as a indication for type 2 diabetes management it is a very well researched molecule in japan and china approved in japan in 2007 approved in china in 2021 it fundamentally works through three pathways impaired glucose uptake by muscle tissue excessive hepatic gluconeogenesis increased beta cell apoptosis and therefore in various clinical trial programs like times 1 times 2 times 3 in type 2 diabetes mellitus both naive and uncontrolled you can do that so where does imiglimin work it fundamentally works through nampt nampnat so basically the nicotinamide is moved to nicotine and nad which is a salvage pathway in insulin signaling pathway also it works on the atp to adp ratio and the amplification pathways inside the insulin signaling apparatus thereby the cd38 will get into a pathway where the lysosomal uh, and calcium upregulation will make the beta cells more efficient to secrete insulin as well as it will open up the close the potassium channel and cause membrane depolarization so imiglimin modulates the mitochondrial chain complexes c1 and c3 they improve insulin secretion and sensitivity in the pancreas and smooth muscle at the c1 the c2 the c3 pathway clearly we know that at each level at number 1 atp to adp ratio number 2 the nad number 3 the uh, the uh, the potassium atp channel number 4 the calcium flux and number 5 the insulin release the nad synthesis complements c3 activation for calcium flux mediated insulin release so the nad metabolism is now the new target for cardiovascular death associated with sudden cardiac death we are seeing suddenly a spurt of cases where people are just dropping dead and we know and we recognize that nad synthesis and metabolism reenergize the cardiac mitochondrial respiratory chain complexes 1 to 5 demonstrating moderate clinical effectivity on mortality reduction in coronary artery disease cases so clearly imiglimin amplifies cellular energy pathways in insulin sensitivity by upregulating the insulin resistant like substrate activity or the atp to adp ratio the downstream signal the pa13 kinase and akt with improvement of nitric oxide they correct the endothelial dysfunction improve cellular energetics and blood force sensitivity and glucose transport and insulin sensitivity so clearly you can see imiglimin is a mitochondrial reenergizer it down regulates the c1 and reduces reactive oxygen species and oxidative environment it can clearly cause the modulation of cardiac energetics and re establishes the equilibrium of nad by improving the insulin secretion and it upregulates the c3 rtc where the insulin sensitivity and secretion has been improved so whether it is the mitochondrial bioenergetics whether it is the liver fat oxidation upregulation and down regulation of hepatic glucose production whether it is the modification of making physiological secretion of insulin from the beta cells or whether it is a glucose uptake by the uh, the, uh, the muscle at each step imiglimin has a cellular energetic mechanism and when you compare it with other agents it drops the a1c by around 1% through this unique mitochondrial pathway and clearly head to head with metformin versus sulfonylureas imiglimin impacts the electron chain pathway the nad salvage pathway the potassium atp channel closure which sulfonylureas do it causes insulin secretion by improving the beta cell dysfunction it inhibits hepatic gluconeogenesis and improves insulin sensitivity so it actually is a perfect mixture of metformin sulfonylurea with complementary actions 
of both and more times one times two times three are trials as add on which have been done for its approval way back almost four years back which have been published in journals like diabetes care where clearly it has so there's a perfect add on to metformin when added and can cause a very unique ratio it's also been studied for safety and efficacy as an add on therapy of people not controlled well with citalopram monotherapy and here you can again see that with imiglimin clearly there is a very good documented data published in good credible journals that it has a very low treatment adverse effects and it's quite safe so whether it is times 1 whether it is times 2 whether it is times 3 1000 mg of imiglimin twice a day has been having the trials done in japan and it has met all the endpoints in a double blind randomized controlled fashion which has been anticipated and expected clearly they also improve the pro insulin to insulin ratio the pro insulin to c peptide ratio and they also upregulate the various insulin resistance markers like homa ir homa beta and quicky one clearly this novel glimin oral antidiabetics has very good efficacy and safety profile in type 2 diabetic patients and when you see the long term studies also the intensity of gi adverse events are virtually negligible compared to metformin and it has a year data also where it has shown that day one sick and drop up to almost a 1% as add on therapy and has been consistent in double blind randomized control studies over a period of time and the japanese data also shows versus insulin also it can be very well combined and a significant drop of both lipids and fasting blood glucose can be seen also it is insulin sparing the times 3 rct from japan showed that a decrease of insulin dose can occur with imiglimin treated patients and when you look at the glycemic profile with cgm and this therapy, uh, this paper has been published just this year if you add this imiglimin the timing range will improve from 65% to almost 80% and that's a substantial improvement and you can see that the various uh, cgm parameters uh, like time in range time above range time below range are favorably affected by imiglimin also the systematic review and meta analysis of all the rcts from prisma identifiers in a very very uh, uh, methodical way has been done of imiglimin and clearly you can see that it addresses a1c and fasting both in treatment naive and uncontrolled cases addresses a1c and fasting both in treatment naive and uncontrolled cases and has a extraordinary safety profile it, apart from maybe hypoglycemia headaches upper abdominal pain vomiting and diarrhea so it's a first in class agent it's a dual acting oral anti diabetic agent it has a novel mechanism of acting on insulin sensitivity and secretion modulates cellular respiration or oxidative phosphorylation at mitochondrial complexes c1 and c3 improves insulin secretion and sensitivity in pancreas and smooth muscle amplifies nad salvage and has a very strong insulinotropic action 24/7 documented by cgm and reduces the harmful pro insulin to insulin ratio improves beta cell function protects from beta cell apoptosis modulates blood glucose effects by improving beta cell function liver gluconeogenesis and in muscle eight rcts have been done over a large population in treatment naive and uncontrolled populations where it has been documented to be safe well tolerated and will be a perfect add on to the currently available agents thank you very much for a patient hearing